Well, I know it's early morning and uh, I'm still in my gym jams. So I've just sat outside for the first time this year in the, in the morning sunshine. Uh, I've missed it a couple of times, a couple of mornings where I've been uh, doing other things. Uh, but this is a Sunday morning and I'm sat outside getting my daily dose of vitamin D while Lady Sarah is still asleep. The wildlife around this area are beginning to wake up. You can hear the screams of get in here this early in the morning. The birds are flying around, which is rather nice. The wood pigeons, little birdies tweeting. And of course, you've just seen a picture of my cobra, Lily, catching a fly. It's the first time that uh, I've witnessed that. Uh, it's still buzzing around in there. It's getting closer and closer to the bottom of the picture. Uh, and then it will succumb to the venom. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to say I don't actually feed my insect eating plants. Um, they do that. They do it all on their own. They catch their own food. I don't. Uh, I haven't had uh, these very long. I only had them for about two weeks, um, but they seem to be doing quite well. The cobra lily is a specialist plant that needs um, needs to keep its roots cool, but the, the rest of it likes to be stay stay warm for some reason. Anyway. Uh, there's so much reflection here, so much light coming in because the sun is so low that I can't actually see myself on the screen. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll see what this sounds like. And these are my insect eating plants. I have a pitcher plant, which is centre of screen, and I have some Venus flytraps, various genera. There's some, that's a sundew. That's a... Uh, Big mouth one, a big mouth uh, Venus flytrap, and then we have a giant Venus flytrap and another tiny sundew. Now that produces little tiny flowers. Never seen such small flowers. And of course, I have more sundews and uh, liverworts and uh, uh, all sorts behind me, and of course, there's the cobra lily. And of course, what you can't see is my other picture plant, which. Uh, I'll have to come stand up and go around and have a look. But yeah, I don't know if you can see. I don't know if I can zoom in. There we go, there, there we go. Right there, dead centre screen, are two Venus flytraps which have caught something. They must have caught that yesterday. But yeah, let's come and have a look at this. Yeah. There's my sundew. Those no, sti sticky bits are what the f attracts the flies. And then the leaf will curl around the fly once it's caught and trapped. It'll curl around the fly and slowly digest it over a thousand years. And uh, I'll try and zoom in a bit more. There we go. There's, there's a Venus flytrap that's just opened with its last victim still inside. This carcass, and uh, of course it will leave that there. Won't, be, won't eject the carcass. It will leave that there to to attract more flies. Anyway, that's enough. A dog, a dog, a dog is barking. This is my other picture plant. Now this one here is producing. Look at a tiny little picture. It's going to grow up into a something as big as this one here. I, th I find them absolutely fascinating that, uh, that, that, that a plant who evolved in nutrient-rich soil, whose changes in eco ecological uh, circumstances meant that it had to capture its own nitrogen from the bodies of insects. Yeah, there you go, that's, that's a pitcher plant. And while I'm up here, I might as well do a close-up of some of these other sundews. There's the other sundew. 
and I'm not quite sure what that one is. I'll have to have a read the uh, read the uh, the label, but it's uh, I did read it once. <laughs> See if we can find these little tiny flowers. Oh, there they are. Yeah, can you see? Probably not. There's, oh, if I get my big fat finger in the way, there's a little tiny flower there, and there's two more coming just there. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Tiny, tiny little flowers. Oh, camera went a bit wobbly. That's as far as I can zoom in, sorry. Yeah, how exciting. 